Malik Scott here in Los Angeles. Yes. I got to bring up uh, your man Deontay Wilder. People want to see him back in the ring. Yeah. Can you give us an update? What's going on with all that? Uh, these guys is out pricing themselves. Um, they yeah, did like you see? And Andy did uh, a few interviews the other day and started, you know, saying, "Hey, he no offer was ever sent. I never asked for that much money." Okay, so that means what Tyson Fury is lying to when he said mm -hmm. Andy outpriced himself? Mm -hmm. So it comes across like him and his father, they have a record of doing this lately, of outpricing themselves. We had a, a whole thing laid out. Andy didn't want to fight for whatever reason. It's okay if you don't want to fight because you're not getting enough money. That's not even a problem. The problem is when you're constantly chasing a fight, then when the opportunity presents itself, you come up with any type of excuse to hide behind the business of boxing. That, that's all the problem was. But this is not an angry thing. I'm not mad at Andy and his father for wanting the best for him because when, it's, when the lights is over and his box career is done, you want to make sure you left with everything you were supposed to leave with, and that includes the revenue that you earn. So I get it. But as a head trainer, it's frustrating to see because I want the best for my guy, Deontay Wilde. I want him to become two-time heavyweight champ. I want him to earn all the money. And you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's just a tough space right now. But um, if, it was, if it was up to me, Deontay would be fighting very, very soon. He would be fighting Anthony Joshua. I wish it could be in January, how it was agreed to by whomever. You know, it's not, it looked like it's not happening, but we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, I spoke to Eddie and he said he hopes the fight happens mid next year. The, the promoter over there still challenges. They're going through some transition, uh, but to him, he's still pushing for the fight. Are you guys gonna get a tune-up by chance in between uh, to kind of keep Deontay active? Uh, hopefully, we'll see, man. We'll see. I would like that. Yeah. I would like that, but once again, even somebody will say that's a low-tier guy or a mid-tier guy, they want so much money. And they're supposed to because their life is on the line. Yeah. And um, Deontay is playing for keeps when he fight any and everybody. So we'll see, hopefully somebody will step up to the plate and um, take the, the largest payday that they, that they ever got in their life. Not saying Andy, because we know Andy earned you know, real good money with agent. I'm talking about uh, a buffer, somebody else we may have to stay you know, uh, tuned up with. We'll just see, man. It's, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Yeah, I, I would bet. Uh, Zilly Zhang uh, is making, uh, you know, his Deontay names. Deontay will knock Zilly Zhang out cold. Yeah? Yeah, he's too big to get out the way. But I, but I like Zilly uh, 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 Zhang. Yeah. But what I really like about him the most is the system that's behind him, which is Sean George, mm -hmm. who's one of the best young up-and-coming trainers in boxing as well. We went to school together. How he got Zhang boxing makes Zhang a very, very dangerous guy. He got him standing behind his front knee. He got him countering any straight right hands that comes at him very well. And he got him just extremely patient. Patient fighters that's heavy-handed, in my opinion, are the most dangerous fighters because they're not in a rush to get to you. They know for sure you're going to punch them. And punching them, you have to reach for them. If a fighter is over 6'5", you have to reach to hit him. By you reaching to hit him, you put yourself at risk. By you putting yourself at risk, you're obligated to get hit with something big. And that's where a lot of these guys get hit with these big shots at. Not because they don't have no chin, it's because they don't have no patience. Like, you get what I'm saying? If you're fighting a bigger guy with longer arms that, that's known for punching extremely hard, you've got to have some form of humility and patience. But seven out of 10 guys don't have humility when they're fighting power punchers, and that's why they end up on their back. Yeah, they, they get angry the moment the first punch hits, and they yes. want to get their, their lick back. Yes. Uh, man, so much going on with, with the heavyweights. Um, just curious, your analysis on, on Fury and Usyk. Uh, I was 50-50 a couple months ago, but after the Dubois fight, I'm kind of like 70-30 towards Fury. Okay. But, you know, he's about to have a little exhibition with Ngano, I think, this sat next Saturday. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, Saudi, see, we'll yeah. see how he looks. I just can't see Fury being that big, knowing how to go to the body, knowing how to box if he have to. And he's a very underrated puncher, hard puncher. He actually punches hard. Um, he knows how to fight big man style. He knows how to get inside. Yeah. To me, Usyk didn't look like he would be able to withstand that in his last fight. But he may show up different for a higher level fighter. The better the fighter, the better you know Usyk perform, I guess. But uh, he is one of the best softballs that ever lace up a pair of gloves. I just think in this case, he may be too small. And I hate to say it, it's not about size. Or it is about size. Because when you fight in Tyson Fury, it is about size. Because he's a big guy that does almost everything very well. And in that case, it is about size. It just, it is. Every big man is not about size. But fighting Tyson Fury, it definitely is about size. Definitely. Given that then, does he just wear down Usyk and end up stopping him in the late rounds? Or, or do you think Usyk has enough to survive? I don't even know. I, it, it's, it's really tough to say because when Tyson got you hurt, 
and you're a smaller man, he doesn't. Okay, when Tyson had Deontay here, yeah. he went at him, but he went at him from a long range to get to him. It was a little different. Think about every little man that he has hurt. He literally put his hands up on you, walk you down, become physical. Look how he treated Cunningham mm -hmm. once he had him hurt. He used his size. Look how he treated, um, I think, it, did he fight Joey Abel? Was it, no, no, not, not Joey Abel. It, just Chisaurus. He'll box, box, box. Mm -hmm. But when he make up a mind, like, okay, you're smaller than me, I'm just going to big man you and take over the fight. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Usyk can handle that. I don't know if he can handle the mentality, the big man mentality that Tyson Fury know how to go into. But we'll see, man. You know, it's tough for me to say that because Usyk is my friend and I'm like, I, you know, I believe he can win, but yeah. I guess Fury, Fury just may offer a little bit too much, mm -hmm. in my opinion, for me to just say Usyk is going to win that fight. On the flip side, man, does Nguno, and, and Nguno, excuse me, Nganu have any chance to beat Fury in, in this fight that's happening? Uh, in my opinion, I'm, I'm very happy for Nganu. I love the stand that he's made. I think he's out of his league fighting Tyson Fury, though. But once again, I don't really take it that serious. Yeah. That's why I, I don't know how to really speak on it. But um, I'm, I'm happy Nguno is getting a shot. I'm happy I'm happy Fury recognized not the kind of fighter Nguno is, but the kind of man he is. Human, yeah. The kind of human he is. And that's why Fury was so excited about this fight, because he loves Nguno, the, the internal Nguno. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you got to give praise and you got to give respect and kudos for just the, the humility that's being put on deck. Tyson, Mike Tyson is in the corner of him going on. So just the collaboration of it all, you have to be, even if you're not a Tyson Fury fan, you're not a such and such fan, you have to be happy about the way this whole thing is being orchestrated. And I'm an honest man, you know what I mean? I want Tyson Fury head on the plate again if he fight us. Mm -hmm. But if, we, if it's coming to this right here, you have to commend him for how he's going about this fight with Ngano. Because it's all Fury giving him an opportunity. It's not Ngano giving him an opportunity. This is all Fury making this possible. The whole thing is. Yeah. And um, you gotta be satisfied with that. Because if it's about a race thing, um, he picked a black man. Mm -hmm. A proud black man to get this opportunity to. That's not even the boxer. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy for Ngano. I'm happy Fury gave him an opportunity. I'm happy the fight has happened. And more than anything, I'm happy that Ngano and Fury is making this high revenue. And um, that's where I want my guy, Deontay Wilder, at making all of the money, mm -hmm. getting all of the shine, yeah. getting all the big time lights because he deserve it. Um, he's the electricity, in my opinion, in the heavyweight division, Deontay Wilder. He's the most dynamic fighter in the history of the sport, and I just want him to leave being the richest in the sport, sport. as well. Yeah. Hey, I, I got to bring this up too. Um, they're saying Ngannou is the hardest puncher like ever in all of sports. Wilder is a freaking. They say if not the biggest puncher in the heavyweight division. Yeah, but Ngannou punches get there a little bit late. Mm. But I think Deontay is the hardest puncher in the history of the sport because he get there quick. Mm. Um, it's almost like when I used to box Vladimir Klitschko, it, it was like. Um, it was like the delivery game, of it yeah like a, a game of inches like mm. the kind of power that vladimir can get from like right here yeah is like six it's not like that bruce lee concept yeah, yeah yeah kind of something like that and lennox lewis had very thudding power that could wake you up later on that night in your dream deontay wilder is a mixture of both mm. he's faster than lennox and vladimir and if speed is power with his power, you know what I mean? Mathematically, he punches harder than both of them. And me being in the ring with all three, including Vitaly Klitschko, yeah. is, I just say Deontay is the hardest puncher in the history of the sport. Mm -hmm. Especially if we're talking about those guys, and those are very dangerous punchers that can literally kill you with power. Mm -hmm. Deontay power is scary. Yeah. I've seen him make grown men have seizures with 20 ounces on. Like, in, you know, like scary hours. Yeah, because yeah, they say like, hey, if Ngannou lands one, Look at what Wilder did. Supposedly, Ngannou's an even bigger puncher. Well, what's going to happen? I don't even think Ngannou will be able to get into a good position to punch Fury. Fury know how to mess up your position that you ain't even in a good position to punch him. Forget just going in there punching him. That's not my language. My language is positioning. My language is hand positioning. My language is defense. My language is how are you going to get there to make the shot, to deliver the shot. I don't even think Ngannou may... I guarantee you they haven't been working on positioning. I would guarantee you they haven't been working on pos positioning to get to Fury. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of, I don't really. It's tough for me to like talk about the fight because I don't know if they're serious. It's an exhibition. Mm -hmm. It's just because I heard at one point there's no knockdowns. It's just yeah. I don't know. But if we, if I didn't know none of that and I just was looking at it as a fight, I don't think Ngano is even going to be allowed to punch. Mm -hmm. 
Like, Fury can stop you from punching him. Yeah. I'm talking from a scientific standpoint. I watch him shut guys' offense down. Mm. Dangerous fighters. Yeah. And Gano is dangerous only because he got a heavy hand. Nothing else comes from with that system. Mm. It's size and power. Yeah. Nothing else comes from that system, but we'll see. And, and finally, um, with this whole shakeup with Showtime uh, stopping with boxing, um, yeah, where, where's Deontay going to land with, with fights? We'll see, man. Yeah. We'll see. That's the business aspect that I hate. Um, I'm not really good at talking about it because I don't really know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. The only thing I really know is I want fighters that I train to make all the money, to get all the shine, to get all the light, and to get everything they're supposed to get out of this game right here because um, it goes quicker than they think. Yeah. You know what I mean? This game goes very, very faster than you think. Before you know it, you want to know. Then before you know it, you're in title contention. Then before you know it, game's over. Okay, Oscar, see you, brother. You know what I mean? So. All right, that is Malik Scott. Malik, man. Good chatting. You, Appreciate it, man. Yes, yes, yes.